Hello friends, uh, please subscribe to our channel. This is being brought to you by, by Gantahouse.com. This video is about colors of German Shepherds, so how can you talk about colors without showing examples? Shown are the black and tan German Shepherd. Uh, what is shown is the West German working line. And uh, these are examples of black and tan. This dog looks almost by color, but it's considered black and tan. Also black and tan. Next, you'll see bicolor. Bicolor is all black except for the bottom of the feet. And uh, these are examples of bicolor. Bicolor are usually found in the working lines, sometimes the check lines. As you can see, this dog is all black with brown feet, but no brown on the face, or very little brown on the face. Another example of bicolor, uh, most likely Czech working line. Here you'll see the black and red West German show line. Notice it's a very beautiful dog, and this is an example of the West German show line. Here he is again in a full pose. This is the black and red show line long coat. You know, you need both recessives to make a long coat. Another very beautiful long coat, black and red. Now we're going to see the black German Shepherds, which are very rare. Only about 10% of all German Shepherds are black. So this is a recessive gene in German Shepherds, not dominant, meaning it has to be from both parents, the mother and the father. So we see some black German Shepherds here. And of course, now we go to the sable German Shepherds, the original color of the German Shepherd. Uh, this is our own dog, Bailey. Another sable, this dog is Bubbles von Gildersport, her mom. An example of sable. This dog is a, another example of sable, West German working line. You usually only find sable in working lines. Now these dogs are lovable and there's nothing wrong with them to be a pets, but they're not meant to be bred. Here's Panda, which is a mutation. Another example of Panda. Again, nice pet, but should not be bred because it doesn't meet the breed standard. The liver German Shepherd. Another dog which should not be bred but can be a nice pet. The blue German Shepherd. Blue is a dilution of black. Again, should not be bred. Hello, friends. Uh, this is Alex from Van Ganta House German Shepherds. And I will post videos related to either dog breeding or dog training on this web channel. On this YouTube channel, I hope you will subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. We're going to try to post more frequently than we have been in the past. Uh, if you like this kind of content about genetics and dog breeding, uh, please subscribe. Uh, today's topic uh, is the color genetics of the German Shepherd. A lot of people do not understand uh, which colors produce which results in the German Shepherd and they don't know which combination of male and female will bring about which color in the puppies. So today we're going to cover uh, that topic. Uh, now before we begin uh, I want you to understand a key term phenotype versus genotype. Genotype is how the dog looks. Genotype is what genetics it has in common with certain ancestors in its line. If you're breeding by phenotype, one way of breeding dogs is to breed like to like. So you will breed a black and tan to a black and tan, or you will breed a sable to a sable. 
that is an example of breeding by phenotype where the object chosen is color. Another thing to consider is the long coat German Shepherd versus the short coat German Shepherd. If you are trying to sell long coat German Shepherds, the long coat gene is a recessive in the German Shepherd, not dominant. So if you breed two long coats to each other, you will have a long coat. If you breed a long coat to a short coat which carries long coat as a recessive, in other words it's hidden, it's a recessive, then some of the pups will come out standard coat and some of the pups come out long coat because the recessive in the standard coat combines with the long coat parent to create long coats. If you're breeding dogs white to white, again you're breeding by phenotype, you're breeding by color. Now, is that wrong to do? In my opinion, that's the wrong way to breed dogs because when you're breeding a dog, you're breeding the total animal. You're breeding an animal based on its structure, its health, and its temperament. For example, let's say you have two long coat dogs and you desire to produce long coat puppies because they command a higher price in the market. But you notice an undershot jaw where the upper bite is well past the lower jaw bite and the dog has a significant overbite. Or the opposite, the lower jaw protrudes further than the upper jaw causing an underbite which is not correct for the German Shepherd. It might be correct for the Brassophilia breeds but it's not correct for the German Shepherd which has a wolf-like muzzle. Now, if the dog has a major flaw like missing premolars or an overbite or an underbite but it's long coat is that the right dog you should breed? No, right? Because the flaw of the underbite or overbite overshadows the need to breed by color. Or let's say you have a dog with uh, east-west hips. In other words, instead of the hips going down like this, here's the tail of the dog. I'm just drawing it roughly. You find that the two legs are bowed in or curved out. Now, the dog is the correct color for your breeding program but its rear legs are crooked. Would you breed that dog? The answer is no. So when you're breeding an animal, your goal is to breed the total animal, not by a certain attribute. So breeders which breed by phenotype and only focus on color are doing a disservice to the breed. So I just thought I'd mention that breeding by phenotype, although it creates a consistent look to your litter, it is, shouldn't be the only criteria in choosing to breed dogs. Genotype has common ancestors. If you notice, we have a video on our channel regarding lion breeding and inbreeding where different combinations of having a common ancestor are discussed. I'm not going to cover in this video. There will be other breeding, uh, videos on lion breeding besides the one I put up earlier. So, that is why this is an important topic. Alright, so now the colors which are not acceptable in the German Shepherd, I'm going to put them down first. Not acceptable. Our liver. Liver is a color dilution gene. It subtracts color and you don't want to breed a liver colored dog. For those who don't know what a liver colored dog is, Look at a brown colored uh, go, uh, Labrador Retriever, chocolate lab, that's liver in the German Shepherd, that's chocolate like type of color. That is not acceptable in the German Shepherd. Another color which is not acceptable is Panda, or Pie Bowl Panda sometimes it's called. This is a mutation and you don't want to breed dogs with this mutation. Some people advertise we have uh, special dogs or unique dogs or whatever the hell their wording is, don't buy from breeders which breed non-standard colors. They're not doing justice by the breed. The breed standard was written by in the SV, the Verich Schufferhund, or the German Shepherd Felix Society, created by Captain Max von Stefanitz in 1899. 
a, a Prussian military captain who developed this breed. He wrote the breed standard. He created the breed. So anybody tells you, well, I breed based on my own wishes or my own desires, that's not how you breed dogs. Dogs have a standard for head shape, color, conformation, chest size, height, weight, temperament, qualities. You just can't breed whatever you want to just because you feel like it. If you're an ethical breeder, you don't produce non-standard colors. The other color which is not acceptable is white. Now, white is not albino, which is the absence of color. Uh, how can you tell your dog is an albino? It might have translucent nails in its paws, where the nails are clear through. You can see, right? They're not white, they're translucent. Now, back in the 19th century, the people didn't know the difference between white and albino. So to avoid loss of color, they just said no white. Now there's a new breed of German Shepherds called the Berger Blanc. I'm not French, so I don't pronounce it with the correct French pronunciation. Berger Blanc. And uh, I think there's an accent here. And this stands for the Swiss Shepherd, since Switzerland is bordered by Italy, Austria, and I mean, and uh, France, all three languages are spoken in Switzerland. So Switzerland, the primary language is German, Swiss German, but they also have a lot of French-speaking people. So the Swiss Shepherd is the Berger Blanc, which came from the White Shepherd. Because it wasn't recognized for such a long time, the fanciers of the breed decided to create a separate breed called the Berger Blanc. So if you like a White Shepherd, that's fine. It is not the German Shepherd. It is not an acceptable color in the breed. It, it, if you want to get a white Shepherd, get a Swiss Shepherd. And uh, that's your choice. Now, so these are not acceptable colors in the German Shepherd. What are acceptable colors? Acceptable colors are bicolor, and I'm going to write that down as a gene combination called AT. AT is bicolor. That's a dog which is all black, but the bottom of its feet, below its uh, knee, are brown. So it's, it looks like all black, but the bottom of the feet look like brown socks. That's a bicolor. Um, it's called AT. AS is black and tan. Now some people will ask what's the difference between black and tan and the black and red you see in the West German show line. The black and red is a black and tan, but there's something called the E, the e allele, which creates the reddish pigment for the tan portion. So that's a separate loci. I'm only discussing what's called the Aguti series. And these colors fall into the Aguti series. The pigmentation of the tan being reddish comes from another low side, not this low side. Is the camera on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now, what are we going to talk about in creating color combinations? We're going to do something called the Punnett square. And let me show you how a Punnett square works before we discuss it using colors. So let's say I have one dog, capital B, capital B. Both capital, capital letters means dominant gene. Lowercase letters means uh, recessive gene. And then I have another dog, capital B, lowercase b. Now it doesn't matter what this gene represents. I'm just showing you how Punnett square works. You will create a square, like tic-tac-toe. You would write one parent B, B, one parent B, lowercase b. You would take this B with this B, it would be B, B for this child. You would take this B and this B, B, B for this child. You would take this B and this B for this child. You would take this B and this B for this child. In other words, that's how it works 
in color combinations. So, uh, so now that we've described the Punnett square method, let's talk about the different